Hey everybody, um, I am hoping to kind of answer some questions about how I have good sensor accuracy with my Medtronic Guardian sensors. Um, I know that a lot of people don't have good accurate numbers and I'm hoping that I can share what I think are some beneficial points um, to help try to make those numbers a little bit more accurate or the sensor work better in general um, for you. So to get started, um, the big first topic I want to talk about is um, when you calibrate. So when we calibrate these sensors, um, you have to keep in mind that your actual blood sugar is typically 15 minutes ahead of your sensor data. So with that being said, um, you have to look at it kind of like a graph. So your blood sugar is going to spike or start to rise, and then your sensor data is going to come up behind it about 15 or so minutes later. So the best time for you to calibrate is in a time where you know that your sugars are steady. So, for example, in the morning, I know that I often experience dawn phenomenon, which is where my blood sugars will rise in the morning first when I first wake up. It is also made worse when I get out of bed and I disconnect my pump to take my shower. Um, my 770G has learned my rhythm at me waking up when these numbers start to spike. And most of the time, if I give it an hour or so after I've connected back up and getting ready, it will be able to correct those high in auto mode with no problem. Um, this is when I would like to calibrate my sensor first thing in the morning. Um, auto mode has corrected that high and my blood sugars are should be relatively close with what my sensor data is and then I can calibrate and then I can eat my breakfast. So um, that's a time period when I try to calibrate when I know that my sensor readings um, should be accurate and close together. Um, and a way that I kind of know if this is happening is if I look at the data. What is my blood sugar reading versus what is the sen my sensor telling me. Um, if they're close, then I know that that's a good time for me to calibrate. So then as my day continues, I will um, uh, continue to monitor my sugar, go about my normal day business. I have 12 hours to calibrate again. Um, if I can, I will try to calibrate before dinner. Um, or um, sometime in the afternoon um, where I haven't eaten anything in a while and I typically have a steady line on my sensor graph. If I calibrate again there, that'll get me through my afternoon or most of my evening and my dinner um, boluses. And I'll have plenty of time in that calibration to where if I didn't carb count correctly for dinner, I'm not worried about the um, calibration being wrong or trying to rush before bed. Um, I typically like to calibrate again about the time I'm getting ready to go to bed. So when I'm doing these calibrations, I'm checking on how accurate um, my sensor is versus my um, blood sugar readings. The next thing, it is very beneficial for us to stay extremely hydrated. Um, that gives your body extra fluid, and since the sensor works on interstitial fluid, that helps benefit the sensor. Ben uh, it's beneficial for the sensor, excuse me. Um, if you start to get dehydrated, you're going to start to have problems with your sensor because it's not going to be able to, um, get the data that it needs from your body. So next, um, sensor placement is also a big role. If you, you have to keep a mental note, uh, which I've been doing this for years. So I have definitely learned the, the spots for me to place my sensor. So if you place a sensor in an area and it fails or it doesn't work right, it's best to try a different area. Um, it doesn't have to be a big movement. Like if you have a sensor that fails on your arm once, um, don't write off the whole arm. It could just be that particular area. So it could be as simple as if you, I like to keep my sensor um, up and down on my body. So on my arm, I try to keep it up and down. So if it failed in this position, the next time I would like to try that arm again after that, first um, time has healed, I might try flipping it around to put the needle in the down position. Try that and see how that works. Um, it could just be the little movements um, in the sensor could find an area of accuracy that you didn't know that you had. And once you start to learn that, 
um, those areas, you'll notice that your sensors will start to work better and you'll have better luck with them. So uh, being that being said, uh, these are where I like to place my sensors. I typically go back and forth between my arms. Um, occasionally, I will use uh, my outer uh, thigh about where the pocket region would be. Um, I, I use those as a reserve in case anything happens um, and I start having a bruising or something on my arms. But for the most part, I do not. Um, I did use my Omnipod uh, when I first had that. When I was first diagnosed. Um, I would place it in the same region um, on my arm. That was before I had a sensor. I like this area um, because of having the Omnipod. I'm used to wearing things on my arm, so I'm cautious of things that I do um, to try to um, not knock that sensor off. Um, I can typically put my sensors on by myself. Um, I've gotten really good at it. I have already posted a video um, of how I do that by myself with one hand, so go check that video out. Um, if you are curious, patience is the big key um, in doing that. Do not get frustrated. Um, it, it If you get frustrated, you might do something and, and it kind of causes a problem and causes the sensor to be removed. So um, patience is my advice for that. So I wanted to look at um, a report to kind of just, I'm going to talk about it and look and it's a good area, or here, I can just stop this and flip you guys around. So this is a weekly review report. Um, I'm gonna quickly just show it to you guys. Um, it's from February 8th through the 14th. It's a seven day look back. And I just want you guys to focus on the um, black circles with the pink rings. Those are my calibrations on this report. And you can see how close the calibrations are to what the sensor data is actually reading. If you do happen to check your sugar and let's say your sensor is reading 120 and your actual finger stick is 180, 200, way up there, it's a big difference, do not calibrate. Don't send that data to the pump. Give it a little bit of time. And hopefully in that time, next 30, 45 minutes, you'll see that your um, sensor data will start to rise and that should be your sensor catching up to um, to those, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, to, to that blood sugar reading. So I'm gonna stop you guys, I'm gonna turn you around and we're gonna look at this report and uh, just that way you guys kind of understand what I'm talking okay, about. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at Monday, February the 8th. So as you can see, um, you guys are seeing these readings like this because I've been working nights. Um, so at midnight, I did my calibration here. That would have been um, before I went to bed on my night shift. Uh, you can see this one was just me using the sensor data to tell the pump, yes, that's what my sugar is. That's why it doesn't have a black spot. I didn't calibrate there. Here is my next calibration. This is about the time that I'm waking up in the uh, early, or late mornings, excuse me, getting ready for work. And then again, this is just me entering in my sensor data to get the correction from the pump in auto mode. Um, I find that that kind of works best. You don't confuse the pump if you kind of just do the corrections with what it's telling you and then do your calibrations. I've, I haven't had any bad problems with that. So we're gonna fast forward to Tuesday. You see here, this is when I went into manual mode um, and turned my sensor completely off. So um, here is my first reading or my um, initial let's get started. Uh, you don't, you see that there's not the green line here. So this is when I first started my sensor and I did the original calibration. And then next I calibrated again and that started me in auto mode. So the times that you have the green line, that's when I'm in auto mode and I got the sensor started. So you can see that the sensor wanted data here and there was a brief period of time to where I didn't provide that data to it. So I um, calibrated, actually this whole day I was um, on a road trip, so that's why I was driving. I didn't have time to check my sugar. So I, I calibrated and did the correction that was needed. Um, you can see here, and that brought my sugar back down. And then I calibrated again, 
and then I calibrate a final time. You can see this final calibration, it was a little off, but once I did the calibration, my sensor data caught up. Then the next day, let me slide you guys over. I did a correction for a 175BG. My sensor data did the correction. My sugars dropped. I went. Um, I had a brief period where I was past my calibration. I did that. Things caught up. Did it again here. Um, on the days that I'm off, I'm not always 100% near my me meter. I could be driving or doing something, and that's typically where these this data comes from. So pan you guys down here to the bottom. I'm trying to get it to to not look so grainy since I am using the computer. You can see I'm trying to do these corrections, a calibration here, another calibration, more corrections in this day. And then that calibration was a little off um, by a, a little distance. Then another calibration, another calibration, a correction, and another calibration. So for the most part, you guys can see, I'm just gonna kind of pan back. Most of these um, calibrations are very close to what my sensor data is. So, so I'm hoping that um, showing you guys this and kind of trying to explain it a little bit will help you guys um, understand how the sensor works um, and hopefully you guys can get better readings out of it. Um, I'm not saying this is 100% the problem. I'm not saying that sensors are perfect. I'm just saying that knowing how they work and trying to plan your day and your routine um, around it can help. Um, I would love to know if I got a set routine every day of Monday through Friday, eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner around the same time, going to work, doing the same thing, um, what my sugars would be like. Um, for most of you who've been around or stayed or tuned in with me for a while, you know that I work shift work. So I work five days on, that could be a day shift. Then I have five days off of whatever I want to do. And then five days on of another day shift, then five days off again. And then I got nights. Um, we'll do the same thing. I'll work two rows of nights. So I really enjoy auto mode because it can keep up with me in that. I don't even want to know how complex I would have to have my schedule be. Um, in my manual mode settings to be able to flip between different programs for days, nights, off, this and that. Um, that could be very complex for me. So auto mode is what I spend most of the time in and I've had good luck with it. Um, I, auto mode does a great job at maintaining my sugar if I'm not being active or I'm not doing anything. If I am a little active, um, you know, you gotta kind of be careful because auto mode will sometimes cause you to go low. Um, at night, it does a good job most of the time. Um, if I do my carb counting correctly, it will, um, you know, I'll go through my, my sugar will rise for my meal and then it'll come back down and everything works like it's supposed to. If I do not carb count correctly and I go high, auto mode is not gonna make major adjustments to correct that high. It's going to do what it thinks it can, and then it's going to end up, you're going to have to have a correction. Um, so the way that I do that, sometimes Automo doesn't recommend a correction, so I will realize, okay, I miss carb counted. Let's do a small increment, um, 20 grams of carbs. So I did that just a minute ago for my breakfast. Um, I noticed I was still kind of high. My active insulin was almost back at zero. Um, I just did an extra 20 grams of carbs because that's my mistake at counting. Um, if it would have been a little higher, I would have done just a little bit more. And that should get me what I need to bring me back down um, to where I want to be within range. So you guys are your best knowledge source and how your body works. Um, I, I'm not. I mean, as you can see, I'm a bigger, heavier set person. I take a lot of insulin. Uh, that's something that I'm trying to work on. Some of you other people are, could be in shape. You could be extremely active and you take a lot less insulin than I do. So you know how your body works. If you have questions, reach out to your endocrinologist or your Medtronic trainer and just kind of tell them what you're thinking and, um, you know, some things that you want to try and see what they say. 
small adjustments make a world of difference. Um, since I've been on the 770G, my um, here's a couple settings that I've changed. I've upped my carb ratio a little bit. I have um, increased my insulin sensitivity. So what that means is um, the amount that the amount that my blood sugar will drop per unit of insulin has went up, which is a good good change. And my active insulin time has increased. With my 670G, it was two hours. That was the lowest setting. Um, now I'm up at two hours and 45 minutes, which is good. That means that the insulin is working a little bit longer and it can accomplish a little bit more within my body. Um, so those are the three areas that auto mode looks at. And those are the three settings that if you're having problems with auto mode, I would kind of focus on. Um, it. I've heard rumors that auto mode looks at your basal rates to kind of give an estimate. Um, I have experimented with that a little bit and I haven't found that to be true. I have also seen somebody posting that changing your max um, uh, basal rates will affect the max moment that auto mode will give you. And I do not believe that is true as well. So um, if you have any questions about your pump and how the system works, read your user guide. Um, that's the way I learned a lot of data about the pump between that and then doing some internet reading. Um, I was able to kind of get comfortable with, um, you know, doing things myself with uh, small inputs from my endocrinologist. Um, I saw my endocrinologist just this past week and she told me that she's amazed with the level of control that I have, that the next focus that we want to focus on is my weight. Um, to, I want to lose the weight so that way my insulin sensitivity and stuff will get more within the no, normal levels and um, I won't use as much insulin. That's the only complaint that she had with me. Um, I meant, heck, two years ago, she got so frustrated with me. She didn't have any information that she wanted. I wasn't hardly checking my sugar. My A1C was around an eight. She was extremely uncomfortable. And she told me that if I come back again, that she wouldn't be able to see me um, with this data because she didn't have the data that she needed to. She didn't want to be responsible um, if I hurt myself. So, um, you know, just a little bit of knowledge and up helping yourself kind of learn about how the system works um, will greatly um, improve, I think, your your goals um, and let you achieve them easy. So um, I hope this helps. Um, if you guys have any questions, please reach out. Um, you can comment on these videos. Um, just know that those comments are there um, for everybody in the world to see. Um, if you want to direct message me, go like my my Facebook page, Just the Diabetic, and it gives you the option to, to direct message me there. Um, I try my best to respond to comments and messages um, within a day or two. Um, just depends on uh, what's going on in my life. And sometimes the Facebook messages get a little hid, hidden from me. So um, it takes me a minute to realize them. And if I do respond late, I will apologize. I am sorry. Um, but anyway, uh, subscribe to this channel for future updates. And I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.